Hello everyone. Today I wanted to do a brief uh, introduction to a series of movies I'm going to be talking about. This is Eric Romer's Comedies and Proverbs that he made during the 1980s. I recently completed this fantastic biography of Eric Romer by, um, by Antoine de Beck and Noel Herp Pay. Again, apologies for my awful pronunciation. I don't do so well in English, and French is a lost cause. Uh, and uh, I'll just give a little brief uh, biography of Romer, uh, in which he was uh, he was born in Toul, T U L L E, um, and uh, very well educated. He he moved to Paris uh, and uh, lived a sort of bohemian lifestyle. He uh, had uh, literary uh, ambitions, and he actually published a novel. This was in the 1940s. Didn't get tracked much attention. He tried uh, to be a filmmaker. Uh, he made. Uh, he actually made a film in 1952, full-length film, that was released and then again didn't attract hardly any attention. Uh, so, and he, as he was definitely a part of the new wave. It, that was a film that preceded all the other uh, uh, directors uh, for uh, debut efforts, uh, the French directors who were considered new wave. And he was also a film critic, and um, he developed very deep, long-lasting friendships with many of the new wave, Jean-Luc Godard, um, uh, Truffaut, Jacques Rivette, um, and uh, he was also a professor, became a professor. He, he, would, he actually taught on the high school level, and, also, and then later on he was a professor of cinema. Um, I think he did that pretty much all his life. And um, eventually in the 1960s, he becomes editor-in-chief of the Cahir du Cinema, for, and, and a post that he served in for a few years. And, um, he was pushed out in the, uh, by a uh, cabal of, uh, of, uh, of some of his New Wave friends who thought that he wasn't giving enough coverage to the New Wave. Uh, he wasn't keeping up with uh, new theories, structuralism. So he was pushed out. Um, and, uh, when he, uh, and then he went into television uh, he made a lot of educational TV shows. He really loved TV as a medium of education. Again, he was a professor. And along the way, he changes his name from Maurice Scher, his birth name, to Eric Romer. And his mother, who I believe died in 1970, never knew of his activities uh, as, a, as a film critic, film maker. Uh, and uh, she would have been horrified that he had become a bohemian. His uh, younger brother, René Cher, became a very uh, notable uh, French philosopher and was a much better student than Eric Romer. He, he passed all the exams to go forward uh, that, uh, that, that his older brother, Eric, failed uh, as far as getting into increased programs in universities. So now that he was out of Cahiers du Cinema, he was always, he, he had made a couple of uh, short, shorter films, uh, but he decided it's time to make movies. Barbette Schroeder produced them. Also uh, a very significant figure in uh, French filmmaking at the time, eventually comes to Hollywood to make some films. And in 1970, 69, 70, he had huge successes, Eric Romer did with My Night at Maud's and Claire's Knee. Um, and he, he, he gained a worldwide global audience. Uh, he won, those movies won awards at different uh, critics associations, festivals. Big success in New York City. New York critics loved him. His films did well. Uh, these were part of the six moral tales. And, um, and then he made another one, uh, Love in the Afternoon, and that one it made more money than any movie he had made up to that point. So it's hard to, it might be hard to conceive for people who don't like Eric Gromer films, but they were actually commercially successful. The only, after My Dad at Maud's, he only had a, two or three of his remaining uh, 17 films that, that didn't make money. Um, and, but after uh, uh, The Moral Tales, he made a couple of uh, historical movies, uh, 
Romer was always interested in history and made Percival, uh, Marquise of O by uh, Von Kleist um, with Bruno Gantz. And then he returns, in the comedy of Proverbs, he returns to what he felt was the new wave, the whole uh, spirit of the new wave, which, and he grabbed 16 millimeter cameras, he, um, he had a very small crew, he uh, paroled the streets of Paris, the greatest movie set in the world, he thought. And, um, and he was making kind of revolutionary, what he thought was kind of revolutionary films. They don't particularly look you would think like revolutionary films vis-a-vis, -vis, say, Jean-Luc Godard's films, and especially his, uh, his later films, but uh, in, in many ways they really are. He was in the sense that he was running against the grain. He was, Romer felt, him, felt that he was kind of a classic, classicist, going back to some of the great French um, dramatists uh, in which the the author kind of fades in the background of his films and of their plays in his films. So the comedy of Proverbs begins in 1981. There's six of them. This is The Aviator's Wife, followed by A Good Marriage, Pauline at the Beach, Full Moon in Paris. These are all Fox Lorber DVDs and they're not in they're not in the best of shape. <laughs> I think there are some Blu-rays. Uh, I don't think in the United States, perhaps not. I think maybe Pauline at the Beach has one. This is the most acclaimed of his comedies and proverbs. This is Summer. And uh, also known, as it, it, Summer was known in the United States, The Green Ray was its title worldwide. Um, and is known as The Green Ray, uh, I think now when it's shown in the United States as well. And this is the final one, and this is the one I really love. I love boyfriends and girlfriends. And um, uh, and this is filmed uh, in, a, in a, a, a newly created suburb uh, of, of Paris that Romer was very much interested in, these new sort of self-contained suburbs right on the outskirts. You can see Paris off in the distance. And it's filmed there, and it's one of his, uh, I think, one of his most moving uh, and and, uh, uh, and fun fun movies. Um, well, I'll get to that down the lane. Uh, but these in these films now he returns, or he goes to. Whereas in the Six Moral Tales, they were mostly about intellectual kind of people with intellectual discussions. These are in the comedies and proverbs. It's, this is about ordinary people. And um, again, he's um, and and he's using inexperienced actors, and he's uh, uh, he these are actors that he knows. He, he's he's uh, he has a group of what they call Romarians, group of actresses that that would uh, some of whom had written him letters and said, "I've got to be in your film," you know. And he eventually he agrees to meet with them if he's taken with them they, their stories and. Uh, and, and how well uh, their conversations are, if they have uh, interesting experiences. So every day at five o'clock at Romer's offices, he would have a tea and, and they would talk and they would talk sometimes for hours. And then when he, he, he um, uses in the Six Moral Tales and somewhat in the Comedies and Proverbs, he's, he's using uh, as a basis for these movies, short stories that he had written in the 1940s, and then now he's transposing them into the 1980s. And, and there's extensive rehearsals, um, conversations with the actors that he's, he's choosing. Again, they're inexperienced. He, he gets them to be comfortable with the dialogue. He lets them improvise. He wants, uh, but once they film, they have to stick to the to the dialogue. But he only does one take in order to preserve some semblance of spontaneity. And he's, and and these six films really have a geographical dimension to them. Paris, the best set that was ever created uh, for movies, um, but they contrast the city, the provinces. Uh, rural areas, but especially the beach, the beach, Pauline at the beach, but the beach uh, is uh, in vacation. Um, it, it's, um, it plays a part in all these movies, and some of the movies, the beach plays a part. But in all of them, it, the ge geography, the spaces that people live in, these ordinary people, and, and, uh, 
in their their ordinary life, in in the sense, and, and Romer's ambition is to bring out pre, uh, the mysteries that exist within ordinary life, and um, maybe even some sublime moments. And I think there are some sublime moments in in these films that, with Romer, it's not punctuated, it's not accented. They're part of the flow of the movie. The movie where the author has sort of disappeared and, and we're sort of engaging, seeing ourselves within the spaces that the characters are living in. And um, so this is the series of comedies and proverbs. I'm really looking forward to, to uh, doing my best. Uh, again, rumor is not a, a um, movie maker. I think it was Gene Hackman in Night Moves who uh, gives him his, his great, uh, the great derisive comment. Uh, the character that Gene Hackman is playing in Night Moves said hey, he once went to see a Romer film. It was like watching paint dry. <laughs> so uh, I, hopefully I'm up to the task so that I can um, uh, create some enthusiasm for Romer's, uh, 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 for Romer's painting. And Romer was a big fan. Romer was a real, uh, he was interested in everything, uh, including painting. And you can see some of his uh, painterly-like uh, compositions in some of these films, even though they have a kind of uh, uh, on-the-run look, uh, they're nevertheless they, they and especially in his, especially in in, uh, in Romer's use of color. All these movies are made in color. Okay, that'll wrap this up. I hope I have in, uh, intrigued some people to hopefully follow me along in these director studies. There'll be some interest. I know there's not as much interest in these kind of. Uh, videos as there are in doing criterions and criterion sale halls and criterion recommendations. But um, Romer is a director that has meant a lot to me through the years, and I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see if I can do them even one iota of justice. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who stuck with me this far. Do appreciate it. You guys take care.